In the last video, we looked at how to determine the products of the electrolysis of a concentrated aqueous substance using the reactivity series for the positive ions and the negative ions. So in this video, I'd like to do another example for the electrolysis of a concentrated aqueous substance, a concentrated solution of hydrochloric acid. So this is concentrated aqueous two part two. Okay, so what am I trying to electrolyze here? So let's name my electrolyte this hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride aqueous concentrated. So, so once again I start with my container and I will have again my inert carbon electrodes because we don't want it to react with the hydrogen chloride that would change the products of the electrolysis connect it to a cell, the longer end is a positive end, the shorter end is a negative end. And now I fill my beaker or container with this solution of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Concentrated HCl aqueous. And concentrated just means that there are lots and lots of HCl in there. Um, and not a lot of water. So this HCl will break up into hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. As we learned earlier, water is also slightly dissociative. So some of the water molecules and the solution will break up into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So the negative ions will be attracted to the anode, so I'll write them below the anode. Chlorine and hydroxide, let's just name this the anode. This is the cathode, the positive electrode. And now I have hydrogen ions from hydrochloric acid and hydrogen ions from water. So since both of these are the same, I'm just going to write them once. So below the cathode, we only have hydrogen ions. So in this case, the reaction at cathode is simplified because we don't have to choose between two ions like we had in the case with the electrolysis of sodium chloride. So immediately we see that hydrogen will be discharged at the cathode, so I'll circle hydrogen to signify that it is the species that will be discharged. And to determine which of these will be discharged, because remember only one of these species can be discharged. That's the rules of the game. We can't have both of them giving up electrons and being discharged at the anode. We'll take a look again um, at the reactivity series to remind ourselves which one will be discharged. So recall that um, the less reactive one is more likely to be discharged because in this case, hydroxide ions are more reactive, so they're more likely to want to hang on to their electrons and not give it up. So chlorine is going to be the one who has to give up its electrons because it is less reactive. So I will circle chlorine to signify that it is the species that will be discharged at the anode. And so the next thing I will do is write half equations for both the cathode and the anode. 
So add the cathode. I see that the hydrogen ions are discharged. So the cell supplies some electrons. Hydrogen will receive these electrons to form hydrogen gas, which is diatomic. So I need two hydrogen ions and two electrons to give me the diatomic hydrogen gas. At the anode, chlorine is discharged. So chlorine will have to give up its electrons because hydroxide doesn't want to. And it will form chlorine gas, which is again diatomic, so I need two of these. And that will give me two electrons given up. And these electrons will travel back to the cell. So those are my two half equations. And once again, I can combine these two half equations to give me the overall uh, equation for this reaction. So I will have, let's just write it down here, CO2 gas plus two electrons. And at the cathode, the two hydrogen atoms receive two electrons and form hydrogen gas. So since I have two electrons on the left side, two electrons on the right side, I can cancel them. And so my overall equation becomes hydrox hydrogen and chlorine ions form chlorine gas and hydrogen gas. So those are the products of my electrolysis. Let's just show hydrogen gas being discharged here at the cathode and chlorine gas being discharged here at the anode. And so in this case, the spectator ion, the ion that didn't actually take part in any reaction, so it's just sitting there watching the game going on without taking part in it. So we have the spectator ion, the hydroxide ion. Now, of course, not all of this hydrogen and chlorine ions will be used up, so, so we still have those in there. But we'll have, as the reaction proceeds, the concentration of hydroxide ions will increase. And when it does, what that does to the solution is that it will make the solution increasingly alkylic. So if you've talked about acid base, you'll see that um, the solution increases in alkalinity and hence its pH decreases. So just for completeness I will write here that the hydrogens are reduced, the hydrogen ions are reduced because they received electrons and since the chlorine gave up its electrons it's oxidized. Oh, sorry, no west here. So if, if you're not familiar with um, oxidation and reduction, um, don't worry about this for now, because uh, I'll, I'll do a, a video on redox reactions, oxidation and reduction. So there we have it. The electrolysis of concentrated hydrochloric acid aqueous will give me chlorine at the anode, hydrogen at the cathode, and a solution that increases in alkalinity as the reaction proceeds. So in the next video, we'll look at how the products of electrolysis of a dilute aqueous solution.